three things. This is a somewhat timely instruction in how to upgrade firmware on Aruberos CX switches such as this 6300M over USB. They're easy to upgrade to the web interface, but this is how to do it when normal access to the switch is impossible. Now, why is this timely? Well, this week Aruba have released a new firmware for these switches and removed all older firmware from the website. Why? Well, it turns out that the old firmware hammers the onboard flash storage and wears it out. Here's a log extract from a misbehaving switch. Now, bearing in mind this switch was only installed on the 24th of July, you can see that it's only run for five weeks before trashing the flash. The web server doesn't work, you can't save the config, and you get weird errors if you try to reboot the switch. This is such an important update that although you need to sign into the Aruba website in order to download it, you don't need to register the switch with them or have any sort of support contract in place. Now these instructions won't help you if you've got a switch like this one, which starts up and then after a couple of seconds shows a dot up on the screen and that goes solid and that's it, it's crashed. As far as I can tell there's no way out of this, it's got to go back to HP. Nor will it help you if your power supply has let out all its magic smoke. I don't know if you can see on there, but the board from there back is all blackened. Here's a different switch which got itself stuck in a boot loop following a firmware update. Part of a stack of two, its counterpart updated OK, but this one failed. We've also got another one out on site which was in a stack of three. That also failed. As you can see from this log, the switch would only boot up so far, then shut itself back down and repeat the cycle. Erasing the config wasn't enough to fix the problem, but what did fix the problem was a re-attempt at updating the firmware, but because the switch wouldn't boot properly, it needed to be done over USB. Now you know why we're here. What you will need is a computer, a USB-C cable, and a USB flash disk with at least 650 meg free, such as this nice wooden Canolbath Cymru one, and definitely not some cheap fake from a dodgy eBay seller. As you can see, my USB stick is partitioned MBR rather than GPT and is formatted FAT32. I don't know if any other partitioning schemes and formats work, but this one definitely does. I got the file on the stick. Let's do this. Okay, first of all, let's plug in the cable and get TerraTerm set up. Notice that even with the switch powered off, it'll still detect the console lead. You want 115,200, 891, RTS, CTS or hardware flow control, depending on which version of TerraTerm you've got. Incidentally, if you're running TerraTerm macros, you want to delay of 100 milliseconds per line here if you don't want the macro to outpace the switch. Cable in, TerraTerm configured, now turn on the switch and wait. At this point choose option 0, as we'll be using the service OS console. At the login prompt just type admin, plug in the USB stick if you haven't already done so. Now type mount USB, and if you type in ls slash mnt slash USB, you can see the contents of the stick. I've got a few other things besides, but that's key. That is that switch firmware which I require. Now type in update primary slash mnt slash usb slash highlight the name of the file and then right click to paste it straight in and press enter. That's updating, so come back to it a few minutes later. That's done. We'll update anything else that needs updating as well, such as service source itself, by typing in allow hyphen and save hyphen updates 30 and then press Y when prompted. That gives us a 30 minute window now to reboot and it will update anything that needs updating. Now just type in boot and press enter. It should automatically select number one. You can see now it's got devices which it wants to update so it's going to do those first. Eventually it starts up normally and you're able to log in. By the way, why did those switches fail to upgrade? Well, both switches, as it turns out, have ports which are failing a self-test. And none of the other 200 and odd switches we've got out and about had this. This switch is one of them. 
but now it's been pulled out of service and allowed to cool down for a few days, it's cleared it. So we've now got a £12,000 switch that appears to be working, so we can't really RMA it, but do we dare put it back into its production? You tell me. Anyway, I hope someone finds this useful. Thanks for watching.